virtually everything we make in uh, spindle turning is either a full bead, a full cove, a half bead, or a half cove. And then there's various combinations of those things. And if you look at the leg, you'll actually see where the, the areas are that have a full bead that rolls into a half cove or a, a half bead that rolls into a half cove, so those kinds of things. So the first thing I want to do is just strike a bunch of lines around here. So I'm just going to take a pencil and it doesn't matter at this point what size distance you have between the lines. This is just a turning exercise. So I'm just going to mark out a whole bunch of different sizes here. And since we only make beads or coves or combinations of full beads and half beads and full coves and half coves, all that, you know, stuff I rambled on about earlier. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this whole cylinder into a series of beads. And then we're going to turn it into a series of coves with a gouge. And then we're going to come back and turn it into a series of beads. And those are some of the exercises that I really want you to work on. So I've got a few marked out there. So I'm going to show you how I cut in a bead. I'm going to start on this middle one. There's my glasses. Now I'm going to set the skew down on this flat surface right here onto the tool rest and I'm going to have the skew at about a 90 degree angle to the work surface. And you can see where the back of my handle is, is down low and I'm just going to move forward until I just make contact with the cylinder and then I'm going to raise my hand and I'm using the toe of my skew to do this. You can use the heel, but I tend to find that I run more. I'll catch and drag one direction or another if I'm not perfectly vertical when I do this. So move it until you just touch, raise the handle. Raising your handle on your tool when you're working at the lathe controls the depth of cut. So the higher I raise it, the deeper I cut. And what I want to do is cut in a few of those and you can see I've got a couple of different sizes here. Now I'm going to use the heel of my skew to make the next cut. I'm going to go from a, a starting point out on the cylinder and again you'll want to watch that heel of my handle there and you can see how I'm, roll, I'm traveling sideways and up as I roll the skew over to create a half of a bead. We always cut from the high point to the low point. You always cut downhill when you're doing it, working on a lathe. If you try and cut uphill, you're just going to tear the piece apart. So again, if I start in the middle of this bead here and just roll that corner of that skew over, you can see I'm starting to get a nice round shape out of it. And if you're having trouble doing that in one even motion, one of the things you can do is start by, again, working on just that one corner of the skew. What I want you to do is cut a bevel, cut two more bevels, and then you'll go back and just round it off. So what we're doing is we put on about a 45, then we knock those corners off, then we turn around and we just keep knocking off the little corners as we go around. And again, I'm using that bottom heel of my skew to do that. And you can see I've got a really nice round little bead. So again, that is cut a 45. And again, you can see I'm actually sliding. My tool, my handle is moving in this direction you know, sideways, and I'm slicing a 45. Then I'll go back and knock those two corners off. And then I'll go all the way around and right into the 
the joining point of the two beads. And you can, the other thing you'll notice is as I'm cutting here, my skew, if you look at the angle to the tool rest, we're running at about a 45 degree angle, maybe 30 degree angle, somewhere in there, to the tool rest and the edge of the work. So you want to make sure that you're not trying this dead on straight. You want to be at an angle and just cut straight around. Cut at an angle. Bring that toe, that toe right around and turn it. And then we can come back and do this side. And you can see the, look at the shine we're getting right off of that, that surface, right off the lathe, off that skew. I mean, it's, it's just perfectly smooth. Um, you almost don't even need sandpaper when you, when you get the skew functioning the way it's supposed to. So what we're going to do is continue across there and finish up all those beads. And then I'll show you how to turn around and use the gouge the proper way as well. Most people just think you grab a gouge and you just jam it in there flat and that's what makes it. Well, you're scraping again. You're getting that same scraping action that we had with the skew. So you're going to get all those flat sort of scraped off fibers. And if I show you how to cut with a skew, you're going to get, uh, cut with a gouge rather, you're going to get a much, much cleaner uh, cove when we start turning those. So I'm going to turn a few more beads and then I'll see you back here with the gouge. You can see I've got a bunch of beads turned here. And one of the things I wanted to show you real quick, the biggest problem most woodworkers have when they're working on a lathe, and I know this is why a lot of you hate this, is they tend to plant their feet in one spot and start turning and just overreach. You have to move when you're on the lathe. It's the only woodworking tool that's out there that you can't set in one spot and stay there all day. Um, if you do, and if we look right here, you'll see what happened was I set myself right here and I started turning the rest of those beads and I was out here and as I came around this way, my tool got too far over and I got back into the 90 degree section there. And as I tried to get into that corner to get that nice sharp V between the two beads, I caught and the the tool ran up and across the bead and just stripped that whole face off of there. So that's one of the things that I want to make sure you understand is, you know, they call, have something I was told about the Turner's sway, which means you're trying to get that tool at the proper angle to the work surface and you're trying to keep it there as you move around. So you can't stay stationary when you're on the lathe. Where we go next is now that we have a bunch of beads, I want to turn them into a bunch of coves and I want to show you how to cut with the gouge rather than scrape. So I'm going to start out here on the, the cylinder section. I wanted to leave one of those there and then I'm going to show you how I turn the coves back or the beads back into coves. So I'm going to safety glasses. Now, like I said, most people would normally just jam it in this way and you can see I'm getting lots of wide shavings there, but it's also not leaving behind a really smooth surface. It's kind of raggedy the way that other one was. So, but if I go back in here and I turn my gouge up on its edge and I'm actually going to be working with a very small section of the, the gouge right in here, which if you look at it, essentially it looks like a small skew. So I'm going to pull in here and cut down. And again, you only cut on the downward stroke. So I go from high, the high point to the low point, which would be the middle of my, my cove. Now, the thing with the gouge is at the very bottom of the cove, you're always going to end up doing a little bit of scraping. And if I slow that down the same way I did with the skew, even slower. 
would be nice. You can see how I'm getting it to cut. And then I, what I do is I'm up on edge, get rid of that. And you can see those, they were dropping off too quick. I couldn't catch them. You can see those nice long curls that are coming off of there as I, as I'm turning. They're hitting the floor faster than I can stop them. So let's take a little scrap. See if I can catch them on the top of that block. As I slice down the one side of the cove, you can really see how I'm getting long, thin shavings off of it. Like if I was hand planing it rather than if I'm just running the scraper around there, if I just jam this in this way, see I'm getting those big wide flakes where the, the grain direction is perfectly perpendicular to the, to the cut and it leaves behind an entirely different surface. If I go back in here and clean this up, it's the same as the difference between scraping with a skew and cutting with a skew. And what you can see is this section's pretty raggedy while that one's actually really smooth by comparison. So I'm gonna Kick up the speed a little bit. And I want to practice that one half of a, a cove to the other half of a cove. And literally, I'm starting with my skew up on an angle this way, and I'm rotating in and down. And now to do that on the beads, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to just start right on the corner, cut right in. And I can turn every bead into a cove if I want. I'm going to do every other one. Oops. I can clean up that bead with my skew. And what you can see is where we're, well, in this area here, we've got a real nice smooth surface that just runs up and around. So that's the next exercise is to turn all those beads into coves and once you get them all turned into coves then you'll make it into a cylinder again go back and do the beads and then I want you to do every other one and have those things flow very nicely from one into the other uh, I'm going to turn in a couple of pummels and I'm going to give you a couple more pointers on how to do that in succession and how to turn up close to them like we have right here and at that point we're rolling on the lathe so let's get this thing going Again, if you're like at the top of the leg where that long cylinder comes down, the taper comes down and then you end at a pummel, what you want to do is you want to work your pummel from both sides. So the first thing we're going to do is start right in the, and I'm going to pull right in, I'm going to do one over here. And I'm going to just start by lightly cutting in and you can see I'm working from the, the left side and the right side. 
and I'm again I'm I've got my tool handle down low. I'm laying over fairly fairly close to flat but not flat. This is probably at about a 20 degree angle to my maybe 30 degree angle to my tool rest and I'm rolling up and over. So I'm taking the tool up this way and straight in that way. So if you watch the, the back of the handle, it moves like that. Come in right in there. And I can bring those pummels way down in there if I want to. Okay. You can see where I tore out here and here, and that was because I got too close to flat and caught the middle of the, the skew. So what, really what I want to do is stay down low to start. Where I caught those was when I was up this way and I was catching the edge, I started scraping that edge. So instead of just slicing through that corner, it scraped it, caught it, and tore it right off. Scraping on the lathe is not like scraping with a ca cabinet or a card scraper at all. So let's see how that one came out. Uh, much, much cleaner. You can see no tear out on the corners and we got in there nice and tight. I'm going to turn a little bead right up against this pummel that we have here real quick and show you how I would get in there. So the first thing I need to do is I've got my pencil line here. So I'm going to scribe that and now where that pummel meets the cylinder, I'm going to turn and knife that in the same way, but what I'm doing is I'm actually using the bevel on the skew up against the pummel as a guide to keep me nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do is take my bead right into the pummel and come from the other side. I've got a little bit of a big skew here, so I might actually flip this over and use the toe. I'm more likely to catch this way. Some days you get lucky. So I'm going to turn that in and get this rounded right over. The key to turning well with a skew is to try and stay on the lower half of the skew when you're first learning. When you're cutting, you really want that thing down low. You want to have your tool rest tight up against your work so you're not real far back. That's your fulcrum. You know, the longer your handle, the more leverage you have, the more control you have over that tool. And if you're turning on that lower half with it up on that corner, what's going to happen is the force of cut is down, so you're not necessarily going to grab and have that skew flop over on you. So you want to try and stay on the lower half. 